Hi team and welcome. I'm Ruben from Link Solutions and in this session we're going to be covering how to do a multi-job invoice with Zero Practice Manager. It's common as accountants to have multiple jobs for the same client and perhaps multiple jobs for the same client and multiple clients in a client group. And it's also quite common for our clients to only want to receive a single invoice from us, not a dozen. So in this session we're going to be covering how to do that. If you find yourself having to do a lot of manipulation or a lot of editing to your zero uh, invoices prior to sending them, then this could help you. So let's have a look. To get started with creating a multi-job invoice, we first want to go to Jobs and Jobs to view our job manager. And here we can see if we sort by client, it's a good way to do it. We have multiple jobs to invoice or ready for invoicing uh, for the same client. Anderson, Bros, finalization or ready to invoice, whatever that job state might be that lets you know. Now, uh, previously, if we first if we click into these jobs, we would have gone to the financial tab to generate multiple invoices for this. But it might be that Anderson Bros uh, is belong, belongs to a group, uh, or perhaps they're a single entity with multiple jobs that you want to receive one invoice. Now, if Anderson Bros belongs to a group, this is the way to find out. Click on the client. And this should occur at client setup or job setup or both. And inside Anderson Bros here, you'll find groups. Now that uh, identifies that Anderson Bros is part of Adam's Animal Farm. And it might be in this scenario that Adam's Animal Farm prefers to receive the invoices for all of its sub-entities, okay? Uh, so that it can then do its own um, transactions between them. So uh, the way to make that happen, if you haven't already, or to check that it has happened, um, is to go to Options and Edit. And you want to check this area down here that says Billing. And you want to ensure that if that is the case, that Adam's Animal Farm is to receive all the invoices for Anderson Bros, that it is entered in here and picked from the drop down list. And that will make sure that when we generate our invoices for Anderson Bros or Adam's Animal Farm, they'll pick up each, other, each other's jobs and send them to the right location. Cool, that's the setup that needs to occur. Now let's go about doing an invoice. So to generate a multi-job invoice, we're going to go to Business and Invoices. This is quite different to how we would normally do it, which is on an individual job. So we're going to go to New and New Progress Invoice. So you notice there's also a new final invoice. As you're generating multiple job invoices, there's a higher chance that uh, some of those jobs may not be complete. If in doubt, select New Progress Invoice. If you were to gener generate a final invoice for any of those jobs that were still in progress, you would accidentally write off some of the time uh, that, that was uninvoiced on those jo uh, that particular job. So don't do that. Select New Progress Invoice. Cool, you should get something that looks a bit like this. Now, under Client, we're gonna select the person that's receiving the invoice, Adam's Animal Farm, and the person who's going to, um, we're gonna send it to is Leone, and we're going to do a job invoice. Now, when I select Next, it's gonna ask me which jobs do I want to invoice for this client. And I'm gonna select the jobs I want to invoice. Perhaps it's just these three and I'm going to select which basis I want to generate my invoices on. Now this can be quite tricky. Um, you either have the actual time and cost basis or the quoted value. All jobs will be invoiced on only one of these bases. So uh, if you have any actual time and cost based jobs in this list, if possible, invoice those separately. Perhaps they're one-off engagements, perhaps they're um, you know, some hourly rate, minor hourly rate stuff. If possible, do that in a separate invoice. It's a lot easier for you. Um, and do all of your quoted base stuff all together. Now if that's not possible and you need to send one invoice with a mix of quoted and fixed price um, job time on it, then select actual time and cost. The reason for that is because it's much easier to add a fixed price to a task inside Workflow uh, Zero Practice Manager uh, than it is to create and add a whole bunch of tasks that represent timesheets. You'd essentially be redoing a lot of those time, time um, activities or timesheets. So uh, we're gonna select actual time and cost in this instance and select next. February 21st is our invoice date. And what you'll notice is that you have an invoice screen, much like you'd already be used to. If you followed along some, in some of our other sessions, I won't go into the details of the kinds of things we can do on the screen, but what's different about it is that you have three, you have three or more um, jobs within the screen now. And each one of them looks exactly the same as you, what you'd be used to with a mix of tasks and costs, tasks and disbursements. Your job now, I won't go into it here, but uh, is to go and modify those so that uh, it represents the, what you want to be invoicing for them. So you're gonna untick things you're not going to be invoicing. You're going to go and uh, uh, click into tasks and write off time or mark up time or carry it forward into the future. 
for things you won't be invoicing um, in, in, on this particular invoice. For any fixed prices you might have agreed that we spoke about earlier, you're going to change your pricing mode to fixed price and override that activity if there was a quote um, that we haven't been able to carry through, override that to say $6,000. That's a lot easier and you can put a note in there to say as per quote or something to that effect. Cool. Once you're happy, you're going to select uh, approve and print. And if you are one of the people who uh, actually send your invoices from your XPM, you're going to need a template, something to this effect that looks like multi-job invoice. Contact us and we'll hook you up with a template you can um, load in, uh, but it should look a bit like this. It's basically very similar to your standard uh, invoice template, except that every uh, invoice, will you have a line break so that every uh, job is on its own invoice. Um, oh, in this instance, we've got subtotals. So we've got a, it's kind of a simplified version of your summary. Uh, yeah, to, that makes it look nice. So you can go and email that out straight from your XPM if that's what you do. Now, if that's not what you do and you're sending, physically sending your invoices from zero, what you should have upon clicking that approve button inside your uh, zero here, we refresh our, um, come to our dashboard just to go show you where we how we got here. If you go to your 81 draft invoices, you'll find a brand new invoice there for Adam's Animal Farm, noting that this is actually uh, for Anderson Bros. And inside that, you should have an invoice that looks a bit like this. We go about generating a multi-job invoice inside our Zero Practice Manager. It saves you a lot of time at invoicing, manipulating invoices inside Xero, uh, and is a great way to group up invoices across uh, multiple jobs for the same client or even multiple clients for the same group. So hopefully you found that worthwhile and we'll see you in the next session.